Typhoon Saola slammed in the northeastern Taiwan during the early morning hours. Actually, right about 19 universal time for everybody watching this worldwide. It's currently about 03 universal time, though, on the 2nd of August here. And as you can see on the current radar imagery, much of Saola has been rained out here. Actually, a lot of that rain came onshore there in northeastern Taiwan. Now the moisture is wrapping around the system and pushing up along the west coast. We have that high mountain range there in the center of the island. This is just dropping absolutely copious amount of rain. And let's take a look at the radar image just prior to landfall. And you can see here that that eye really did contract and then move here towards the west, moving onshore. But not just the eye wall, it's these bands that are pushing onshore there that you see not only the heavy rainfall, but the gusty winds. I saw one report of upwards about 80 knot gusts there in northeastern Taiwan, right in the right front quadrant. And if we take a look at just another imagery, basically just at landfall here. And this was right about 2.30 local here in Taiwan. That's about uh, 18.30 universal time here. So landfall likely occurred right about almost around 1900 uh, UTC with an eye wall right here just off the coastline. And those outer rain bands pushing on shore. So the eye wall really did contract. If we take a look at the microwave imagery over the past 24 hours, we showed you this in our video update last night if you did watch it indicating that the storm was making a strong left track but it did look like it should have stayed on a northerly track after wobbling a little bit there but then it just kept on wobbling and continuing to push there towards the left and this is just showing the microwave imagery from uh, sims here at the university of wisconsin you can see it pushed off there towards miyakajima then steered quickly towards the left uh pushing right up along the coastline but then just completely lost a lot of its intensity as it was right up on the coastline there. On this, it does kind of look like uh, it did not make landfall, but at least indicated by the most recent radar imagery, it was right next to the coastline there, likely making a landfall, just clipping the coast at the very least. But uh, regardless, though, the mountains of Taiwan have absolutely ripped this storm apart. You can see at first here, all that moisture pushing up onshore along the east coast while the storms rain in this area. Then look at this band forming up there along the west coast as it starts to pull the moisture out of the uh, Taiwan Strait here. So first here, then here, that center of circulation just skimming up along the coast pushing into and over Taiwan. Now that center of circulation kind of is skimming along the coastline and along the mountain chain here because it really just can't push over those mountains. But the overall moisture as shown on this visible slash infrared imagery just shows that overall circulation is continuing to push over Taiwan, likely is going to continue to push off there towards the north, affecting China within the next 24 hours. Now, also on this imagery, you're looking at uh, Typhoon Adamre pushing out towards the Yellow Sea. Actually, still a rather decent eye wall forming up on this system as it continues to rush off there towards the northwest. Where are both of these storms going? Well, and let's take a look at streamline analysis at this time, which I can honestly say this uh, streamline analysis has been handling the mon uh, these uh, storms better than the model forecast. Yesterday we were talking about how the streamline was indicating kind of a track on this direction instead of off here towards the north, like a lot of the uh, models were showing. And the same thing with Saola was the... Uh, the circulation is so broad around that system that it likely would turn off towards the left as well. Uh, I kind of discounted the one around Seoul. I thought that storm system kind of had more control on the overall background flow, but it did look like it did follow this overall streamline analysis and that overall flow. And uh, Dogmore, we kind of talked about how this storm likely would make it more westerly track before switching towards the north, and at least at this time, it was like many of the agencies are actually kind of shifting towards that as well. So just one thing to note, this model, or excuse me, this uh, streamline analysis from Sims here is an absolutely fantastic tool to use. Definitely, as long as you know what you're looking at here, it can be very accurate even into the long range. Now, uh, Saula pushing off here towards the left, uh, likely going to continue to follow that flow off into the westerly direction. And Domre continuing to move onshore as well. Both of these systems 
moving through there. Uh, once again, though, Salo is having effect on Dom Ray, kind of making it turn towards the west instead of the northwest, more so just due to its complete uh, control of the atmosphere in this area. And here is what the Joint Typhoon Warning Center is saying on Dom Ray at this time. Currently a typhoon at 65 knots. And definitely there is an eye wall within the storm system, so that does make uh, rather quite sense. Uh, 55 knots, though, within the next 12 hours and continuing to decrease intensity after it moves over land. Uh, the big threat here, though, is northeastern China has been continuing to see flooding rains, and this could very well exasperate the situation here. So definitely going to continue to watch this story as it develops. Now let's take a look at what JMA is saying for South. They actually have the storm as a severe tropical storm at this time. Uh, I do think that's more or less correct, actually, but the Joint Typhoon Warning Center is still calling it a typhoon here, but it is pushing off there uh, towards the northwest. Uh, center of circulation, uh, as we've seen on the microwave imagery, likely is rain about in this area now. Uh, it's moving around Taiwan, basically around the mountain chain, and then pushing off there towards the west. But once again, though, the overall broad of the circulation, as you see actually with this yellow line showing that wind field, uh, it continues to extend out very far from the system. And all of Taiwan is currently being battered. If we look back to a satellite, image, you can see that if you are in Taiwan here, you're basically under a complete mask of cloud cover. And now the storm is going to continue to push off there, likely around Fujian province, making a second landfall as a severe tropical storm and even a weak typhoon, very possibly. Uh, flooding rain is going to be the main threat. Even coastal storm surges, especially in low-lying areas, and not to mention the fact that these gusty winds and even some of these outer rain bands. The storm has been experiencing very high turbulence, so uh, these outer rain bands definitely could also bring that threat of tornadic activity. So very closely, we're going to continue to watch this storm system. Make sure you follow us on our Twitter updates and also on Facebook throughout the day. You can follow me at Robert Spetter or at Western Pacific Weather uh, for more updates on Dom Ray and Saola. Now, look off here towards the east because we also have another tropical disturbance spinning up here. The Joint Time Food Warning Center has now issued a tropical cyclone formation alert on this area. JMA also continues to watch this area as well. Some of the models are indicating in the long term this actually could get picked up and pushed off there towards the west. Basically following in the footsteps of Dom Ray. Now the other hand though, uh, it's going to have a lot more moisture to work with then, which Dom Ray did, so I do think the storm could get stronger if it did develop. Now this is GFS's outlook. Pushing out there towards the west, likely uh, pushing on there around Kyushu and some of the southern Japanese islands before lingering. Take a look at this, though. So a trough is what this model is expecting to pick this storm up and push it there towards the northeast. That happened. Uh, much of southern Japan very well could get affected by the storm, uh, likely into next week. So uh, definitely going to continue to watch this system as well. Still kind of long range, still getting into its initialization phase. So uh, the track very well could change, but we will continue to keep you posted here on westernpacificweather.com. But that is all for right now, everybody. Please click the annotations on the screen here, the one in the top left. That is from Mr. James Reynolds, his most recent storm footage. Uh, definitely very interesting stuff going on there across northeastern Taiwan. He went out there and shot some of the, these places I was talking about that have received these absolutely copious amount of rains. Actually, northeastern Taiwan, one station there has seen upwards of about 1,700 millimeters within the past 72 hours. And in the past 24 hours alone, over 500 millimeters. So flooding is going to be of major concern, obviously, here. But he is there videotaping that, so please uh, go up here. Actually, I put a link to his channel so you can look back a few videos. And also, uh, RP Weather or Weathercaster Pat here in the top right, his most recent video on the storm systems as well. And also, please uh, click the annotation below if you really want to subscribe here on YouTube. And then check out our website at Western Pacific Weather. Plenty of updates throughout the day on the storm systems. But thanks again for watching, though. Please stay safe out there and have a great day.